Welcome to all inspiring chefs, cooks, and everything in between alike. This is Griever, your guys' host as always. This is my bar, the place I am always at, and this, this is as always been, Shokugeki, no Soma, chapter 289. And let's get cooking for a moment, because I'm not going to say that I was wrong in the last review, because at the end of the day, my point stands. At first, the first page, I went, oh, like I, I have been so uppity, so tense about disappointment within a week-to-week -week basis of Shokuyaki no Soma, bracing myself for it and being disappointed that I did, I will admit, jump the gun a little bit. In my last review, I stated that we did not get a dollar amount, that the Sukasa first seed versus first seed thing is, is, you know, it's been forgotten, they can't even hold a plot thread, and I was wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong. However, I can't take full blame for that because, at the end of the day, still dropped. Still, we don't know. And by the looks of it, we will never know. And that is a piss-off. I'm going to say, once again, that is a piss-off. When we started this chapter, in my, at the end of the last chapter, we saw that Soma did, of course, win by doing something that is out of character. And I still hold true to that. That is still fact. But the fact that they did not forget the Sukasa versus Soma for who's the better first seat currently, like gauging their level at the second gate, having a competition on the side, was not forgotten. So that is my beat. The problem is, what is their beat is the fact that they come up with this stupid, stupid idea of she runs out of money. So... She can't give a proper dollar amount and can't even say, oh, well, if I had the money, let me write you a check even. She won't even do that. So I'm, I'm, I'm really ticked off because this means we do not know what his dish was worth in dollar amount. And we then do not know who's won the competition, Sukasa or Soma. Now, some people might say who are holding fast to this, some people might say that the Soma versus uh, Sukasa thing has to happen later. We can't have that. Who's at the right level right now? No, 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 no. The best experience you can get, the way to level up the fastest in anything in life is to be thrown to the wolves. It's dangerous. It's high gambling, high stakes. But usually you come out on top. You can get six months to a year's worth of experience if you're thrown in a position that you're not ready for and you manage to get out of that, uh, like, not unscathed, but survive it, you usually, what takes five years of careful planning and doing, you jump it. That's why the apprenticeship program in all across Canada, for example, exists for the trades, that there's nothing better than practicality, practical teaching, throw you on a job site, teach you the skills from the guys who actually do the work. It's it's the easiest, best way to get the most amount of experience in the shortest amount of time. So during the blue competition, it's not unreasonable to think that the characters may or may not have the opportunity to level up between gates. That is part of it. Now, these gates themselves have, though been a bit of a challenge, have not been truly difficult in my mind. Suffice it to say that the Sukasa Soma thing could still stand. We could still see that Soma, once again, is below Sukasa's level, and that would make sense. But then Soma would not be disheartened by this. He'd only grow, you know, fire in his eyes, ready to go. That would be part of his character. He wouldn't sit on his laurels and, or get depressed or anything about that. So that's all fine and dandy. We get a little bit of more information about the bookmaster and all about uh, this shogun type person who heads the WGO and all this stuff and all about uh, this person very rarely shows themselves and one of the extra prizes of this particular blue competition is the fact that you are going to become their private chef. You're going to be able to cook for them. They make themselves only t for a few different dinners, but you'll be the chef. All the Noirs are trying to get their 
uh, all the light chests. It's a big honor. Of course, Soma. Now, this is all, all true to Soma's character. He's like, well, I don't really want to be like held down by that. That's not me. I want to run my, my diner and stuff, and I don't want to be his private chef. And everyone's like, ah, oh. Sukasa has it the best in saying, and this is what Soma agrees on, that someone of this caliber, I want them to rate my cooking. Someone who is considered one of the great, uh, I guess if you're going to put them, if Arena has the god tongue, maybe this person has the super god tongue uh, around this in this universe. Tsukasa wants to see where he measures up and see if if he's reached his peak or if he can still go further. And there's no better thing than to meet the best of the best. So that's all fine and good. And I don't mind that first part of the chapter. That That's pretty good. And overall, this chapter itself is not bad. It's not bad. It's just the setup from the previous couple chapters is falling very flat at the very beginning just because of the whole dollar amount and the competition being put off for no real good reason other than plot device. But the idea of Soma and Tsukasa having different viewpoints, and of course the judge throwing her useless two cents in about being the private chef and all that, and all about the differences and how they view this blue competition. That's all fine. That's good character building. After this, we jump over to Arena, and she is, of course, waiting there at the third gate along with some of the best of the best of the noirs, including Saiba. So now within the inner citadel, we see that Arena and Ashia, or Ashia, whatever people are calling him, Saiba is trying to show honeymoon flyers, like, I want to go to Italy. What about Rome? What about France? You know, all this stuff, planning their honeymoon already. And Arena's just like, don't talk to me. A bunch of banter that really amounts to very little. Uh, apparently, she has no form of any type of syndrome from being kidnapped. She was clearly let go. Why nobody else knows about this? Like, ugh, ugh. But Arena is safe. She seems to be herself. All right, I hope, I hope, I hope we have a couple of chapters just explaining because this chapter was not bad. But bringing Arena back into the story with no explanation of how she got away, why no one knows, why they're even allowing the blue competition to start like this is getting. Mm. Okay, we're gonna avoid all of my problems with that situation and just focus on this chapter. Raina and Saiba talking. She doesn't want to talk to him. He's ludicrous about the honeymoon. He says, I don't even know who you are. You know, I know nothing about you. Saiba brings it up. All right. You want to know who I am? And he is, by the sounds of it, by the looks of it, it's genuine. This is his actual backstory. And it's, it's a child throwing a tantrum. I saw that posted in the comments section after reading the chapter while I was at work. And it holds true. It's a, it's a, I mean, as he goes through life, he never knew his father. And so far, uh, I mean, the Soma's mother being the, uh, the book master, I think we can throw that out. I was never a fan of that theory. I'm more likely to believe it's either Arena's mother or Arena's grandmother, Suzanne's wife. One of those two people. If not, it could potentially be Ashia's true father. Nah, maybe, maybe not. Uh, at that point, I think that's a bit of an ass poll. But suffice it to say that his backstory is, oh, okay, so he had a drunk mother. His father wasn't around. He had a drunk mother who tortured him, beat him, like wanted booze, that kind of stuff. Okay, classic. Not as, not as tragic as some of the One Piece backstories or other backstories that you could fake. But still kind of like, okay, shit, that happened to a kid. Um, but by the looks of it, she died at when he was rather young. So he suffered for a few years. Still traumatic. Bad childhood. Got it. Uh, rough streets of Detroit sort of sounding thing. Uh, they say the northern parts of America, but this is Canada, man. So, <laughs> I mean, there'd be a lot more snow going on. Now, the issue I have is that this whole backstory goes on. Okay, so he got into an orphanage, and Joshiro was happens to be one of the person that does a, basically a charity thing for this orphanage, and help comes and helps cooking and catering and teaching the kids how to cook or something like that. 
Uh, okay. And then he taught me all about different cuisines, and he taught me all about, uh, you know, different things around the world, because he's a world traveler, and uh, I, I really liked it. He would come, he would leave, and he'd come back and stuff, he'd be in America, and it'd be great. I'm like, okay, okay, cool, cool. Um, got it so far. Nowhere in this, because when, as he says, uh, when I turned 15, that's when uh, apparently Joshua's wife passed, so we have confirmation. That Come on, guys, it's confirmation. Stop with your out there theories. Soma's mother is dead. Confirmed not only by the author, but in story. Soma's mother is dead. So, she passed away, and according to him, he basically said, Okay, bye, dear. Take care of the kid. I'm going off world traveling. You know, so maybe she was good with that. I don't know. Either way... That's what used to happen. Joshua recognized, okay, I got to step up and be more of a parent and got to be around because my wife is gone. So I can't be doing this anymore. So I'm sorry, you know, I, I'm probably not going to be able to come to America anymore. Now this kid, this little, this little son, looked up to Joshua as his dad. And that's what happens. Foster children, you know, they need a father figure or, or even a mother figure, any type of figure in their life that treats them with respect, that teaches them things, that cares for them and cares about them. And that is that is true. And by the looks of it, from what we've heard Joe Shiro say, he does, he, my other son, that kind of stuff. Here's the issue. Here's the issue. Now, we're not going to get into the paperwork route. I've been down that road personally, and I know a lot of people that suffer from this road. Now... You cannot give me the whole paperwork route in this shonen style manga. You can't tell me, oh, well, adoption from America into uh, Japan, and you are a single father, and you ha don't have a good track record, we don't have responsibility, any of that stuff. Anything like Homeland Security and immigration and adoption and stuff, if they bring that up as the reason that Joe Shiro did not just adopt him and bring him over to Japan, that's some sting going fairy tale Team B is staring really mean at me, so I just give up without trying level of, of like, that's realism. This is not that. You cannot integrate, you can't have your uh, uh, accurate drama. You can't bring a, a CBC or NBC level of police show drama with lawyers and statistics. You can't bring law and order and house storylines into a shonen manga. It doesn't work. It's not the way it works. Unless you establish that early, that this is about paperwork. This is about rules and regulations, and there's a bunch of stuff, but we're going to beat the system all the time, and this is one time he couldn't beat the system. That There's no establishment for that. So why he left him there is just, okay. I hope, like, I hope like many other people as a Joe, Joe Shiro fan, that Joe Shiro has set this all up. He has set everything up. His leaving from America... Uh, raising Soma afterwards, sending him to Totsuki, which apparently was Sanzanaman's idea, not his, but I think that that's a little, I think he's kind of fibbing, shall we say, the whole uh, knowing that Saiba became a dark chef, a noir, and their meeting, his loss to him, which is once again staged, and their final confrontation here at the Blue, the thing that he dropped out of, he couldn't survive. He has two sons, one blood, one adoptive. He wants them to almost challenge each other, get to the top together as brothers in a sense. Something, maybe he's going down some route. Maybe it'll all make sense at the end of the arc. But I hope it's something to do with Joshiro's grand plan and not this whole, well, I tried, but they refused me at the paperwork office. So, because like we're adding, the problem is, once again, we're adding a, a police show, like a, like a seven o'clock and eight a primetime police show drama into our shonen if we do that, and I don't like that. So I, I, that doesn't fit. That's an unknown element. I mean, no, but no other character in this series has had a problem with paperwork or regulations or anything like that. So I don't like that. And the issue still stands. So he presents Soma, and the chapter, I Want to Be You, the title, is referring to Ashia. 
He wants to be Soma. He says, you know, Joshua is my father. I wish I was Soma. Why can't I be you? You know, I want to be you. I should be his son. I should be, I should be, I should be, I should be. Okay, so, and that's where he went black. But once again, we got, we got a guy who's like literally throwing a tantrum. A 15-year-old who just threw a tantrum. Like, so your favorite person is le like, th that would be like if you met your hero tomorrow. If you took a 10-year-old and they met, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, Sidney Crosby or they met uh, Aaron Rodgers or something like that. And or Robert Downey Jr. Somebody, somebody they looked up to, and and they they met them for for a couple of days or something, got a got a free you know weekend with them or something. I don't know, and then uh, then resented every single like child that got to spend more time with Robert Downey Jr. Like it's it's no no like like this is a person that cared about you and stuff. But I'm sure there are other people in the orphanage, friends he made or something like. Like, Joe Shira wouldn't have, have had uh, a bully or a mean child, and, and there would have been a whole, I got beat up, um, you know, because I was a favorite or something. None of that happened. So it was only a drunk mother, and he actually got to spend time with a great guy, and now he resents both Soma and Joe Shira. Like, I know it's supposed to be tragic, but the numbers to me just don't add up. Unless he's like already been psychologically broken before he even went to the orphanage. But that wouldn't make sense because he wouldn't have opened up to Joe Shiro. So I, I just don't see it. Now I know I'm rambling here guys, but this is what it is. I don't know what you guys think, but the backstory just to, for me doesn't work. It, it's, it's got its tragic elements, but the numbers don't add up to, to now. Now, of course, he also said to Arena. I'm only going to give you half the story or something similar to that. So we get the year from the day I was born until Joe Shiro left me and I started feeling resentment. We don't get anything after that. What happened to him after that? I can surmise this pretty easily myself. Okay, what happened after that? He uh, decided to try to hone his skills so he could once again meet Joe Shiro or something or take down Soma or something like that. He was all about the revenge thing, classic. And he met up with the Noirs who trained him in arts that he never thought possible. And he went dark. Very classic shonen. Not mad at the classic shonen, mad at the what we just kind of read. Um, but we did get a backstory, so can't hate on that. World building, gotta like that. Backstory for him. Uh, after this, we see that uh, Arena believes the story, at least that part of it. And then we get that the third gate has opened. So Sukasa Soma, everyone can go through to the third gate. And we see uh, Escanor drinking some Crown Royal. We see Ezdeth. And we see uh, some Tao figure from Shaman King in the background being all, we are the noir villains. And according to the bookmaster and Anne, uh, half of the light chefs have fallen by the second gate. None of the noirs have failed thus far. But, of course, that's just to build some tension. Once again, I believe that the bookmaster is a woman, most likely Arena's mother or grandmother. But that's just me. That's my theory. Anyways, guys, this, uh, I know I rambled a lot about the backstory and my problems with it and repeated myself a lot. I tend to do that sometimes. Uh, sorry about that. But what did you guys think of the review? What did you think of the chapter? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Please like, subscribe, comment. As always, it's always very much appreciated. This has been Griever with your Behind the Bar Reviews for Shoki Eki no Summer, Chapter 289, I Want to Be You. Keep cooking, guys. As always, drink responsibly. And let me know what you thought of Saiba's backstory. Does it work? Does it feel out of place to you? Let me know in the comment section down below, guys. See you next time.